Thank you very much. It was nice to have you. At this point, we will roll into the packet. Starting on page nine, we have referrals, of which there are none. On page 10, we have the operations committee minutes from May 3rd, that's page 10 through 19, followed by the April 27th Health and Human Services meeting, pages 20 through 37. And that's going to bring us right into our first resolution, which is the risk reserve. Uh, there's an explanation on page 39 if you need a little backstory. Uh, will the cl clerk please read the resolution? Oh, you're moving right along, Madam Chair. Wow. Lance, you can stay in Alaska, my friend. This will be resolution 22-5-1 to create a risk reserve account for the Human Services Department. Fiscal note, no budgeted dollars will be required to fund the account. Surplus dollars from the 2021 and future budgets will be used to fund the account. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Oh, first we need a motion. motion. There we we'll have uh, Supervisor Bry will make the motion. The second will be Supervisor Fisher. Any discussion on the resolution? Any discussion on the resolution? All right. Please vote. No, not Ted Tito. Don't beat the thing up yet. There we go. Okay, now you can. Chairman Plimmel. Trent, I'll vote yes, but at this point, I'm going to probably lose you. So. <laughs> yes, going forward. Okay. All right, that motion passes, uh, the resolution passes 19 to zero. Next, we have the Public Safety Committee minutes from the April 11th meeting, pages 40 through 44. The Public Safety Committee meeting of April 25th, page 45. Pages 46 through 40, 55, we have the Humane Officer comments. 56 through 76, the Sheriff's Department comments. And now we have arrived at our second resolution on page 77. This will be resolution 22-5-2, to provide for unanticipated revenue from the Bureau of Traffic Safety, housed with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation's Division of State Patrol, to finance additional patrol for speed, seat belt, and reckless driving enforcement through August 2022. Fiscal note, the costs to be funded in the 22 budget are included in the traffic police overtime and the adjustment to the budget totals $27,669.60. We have a motion from Supervisor Hamilton, a second from Supervisor Zerflu. Any discussion on the, mo on the resolution? Any discussion on the resolution? All right, let's vote. Chairman Plimmel. Plimmel votes yes. And that resolution passes 19-0. Moving on, on page 78, we have the seed committee minutes from the April 25th meeting, followed by the seed committee minutes from the May 4th meeting. That's page 79 to 83. Next, the Golden Sands Resource Conservation and Development Council, pages 84 through 92 from their March 17th meeting. The PACE Board of Directors, April 14th meeting on page 93. The staff reports for the seed committee for the month of April, pages 94 through 98. The Citizens Groundwater Group meeting uh, from April 18th, pages 99 to 100. Followed by the third resolution coming from the seed committee, pages 101 through 105. This will be resolution 22-5-3 to provide approval for of an initial resolution of Wood County to participate with other counties in accordance with an intergovernmental agreement pursuant to which Fond du Lac County, Wisconsin will serve as a conduit bond issuer for revenue bond financing for Bug Tussle One LLC to finance a project for acquisition, construction, and installation of certain telecommunications infrastructure for the purpose of providing wireless internet and telephone communication services to businesses, governmental units, and residents of rural communities where such service is currently unavailable or prohibitively expensive. 
the project, which includes project costs located in Wood County in an amount not to exceed $11 million. Fiscal note, none. I have a motion by Supervisor Buckkey, a second by Supervisor LaFontaine. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Any discussion on the resolution? All right, please vote. Supervisor Plumo votes yes. <clears throat> All right, that resolution passes 19 0 also. Moving on, we have the JNL Committee April 25th minutes, page 106, followed by the JNL Committee May 6th minutes, page 107 to 115, which brings us to a pair of resolutions on page 116 and 117. So we'll take 116 first, Madam Chair. This will be resolution 22-5-4 to terminate the Renewable and Sustainable Committee pursuant to County Board Rule 31B. Fiscal note, nominal in savings in per diem and mileage. We have a motion by Supervisor Hamilton, a second by Supervisor Roser. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Any discussion on the resolution? Please vote. Plumo votes yes. That resolution passes 19-0. The fifth resolution on page 117. This will be resolution 22-5-5. To amend county board rule number 40 so as to allow the county clerk to set the biennial, biennial committee organizational meeting dates and times. Fiscal note, none. We have a motion by Supervisor Hamilton, second by Supervisor Zerflu. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Any discussion on the resolution? Vote. Supervisor Plimmel? Plimmel votes yes. All right, resolution five passes 19-0. On page 118, we have the Hurt Committee minutes from April 25th. Pages 119 to 131, the Hurt Committee minutes from May 5th. And the sixth resolution, page 132 from the Hurt Committee. This will be resolution 22-5-6. To become eligible for snowmobile trail aid monies for replacement or rehabilitation of one bridge on private land for the 2022-2023 snowmobile season. Fiscal note, no cost to Wood County. Total reimbursement is from the state snowmobile aid account and totals $175,855. Motion by Supervisor Hamilton, second by Supervisor Clendenning. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Any discussion on the resolution? Please vote. Thermal votes, yes. That passes 19-0. Next, we have the Pitt Committee minutes from their April 25th meeting, page 133 followed by the Pitt Committee minutes from the May 2nd meeting, page 134 to 141. The Macmillan Library Board of Trustees from March 16th, pages 142 to 143. The South Central Library System Board of Trustees from March 24th, page 144 through 145. The Wood County Library Board minutes back from January 27th, page 146 and 147. The UW Commission minutes from February 10th, page 148 and 149. And that brings us to the end of our packet and our last resolution. Uh, Supervisor Clendenning. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'd just like to know if this uh, trip to Alaska, is this a one-way trip? Uh, Unlike your trip, I believe it is round trip. <laughs> Definitely.
Clark, will you? Oh, we need a. Yes, will you please read the seventh resolution? I will. This will be resolution 22 5 7, relating to the life and public service of Lorraine Kruger. We have a motion by Supervisor Hamilton, second by Supervisor Wagner. Uh, we, we, we will do this as a voice vote. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Any comment? Thank you. All in favor of approving this resolution, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Now we'd like to stand for a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Please be seated. <laughs> All right, uh, the last item on our agenda, we have uh, Kurt Berner from the Samuels Group who's gonna give us an update on the jail project. It's a good thing you got here early because <laughs> we really blew through that. <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. I uh, figured we would provide a uh, brief update as to the progress of how the project's moving along in the design phase. I'd like to tell you that we are on schedule, um, continuing to move forward with having the uh, project ready to go up for bid in July. And I want to explain the process to you as to what that's going to look like in the month of July. We're going to put uh, the um, construction documents out on the street. Uh, and when I say out on the street, that's for anybody that uh, wants to bid on those public projects will then be able to bid on bid categories and we'll break it up into small bid categories so that we can um, encourage as much local participation as possible. And we give about a month's time for them to bid on the project. So if we would collect bids in that month of August and then what we do is we go through and vet those bids and uh, then make a recommendation. We'll come back to uh, the board with a recommendation of award for those contractors based on who is the low uh, bidder for each category and then at that point you'll have kind of a summary of what the total cost of the project is. So a lot of things that have to happen until before we get that ready to go in July. So some of the upcoming things that are happening We've got a couple of meetings uh, that we're hoping to get on the agenda with the city for uh, the PDD process. Um, we've got plan commission, and then we've also got uh, the council in June, and we've got some meetings before that internally to prepare for uh, getting the PDD process ready to go. Um, the ODIP, and I think most of you are aware of that, the owner-directed insurance uh, process that's going to be utilized on the project, which obviously is from a workers' comp coverage uh, through County Mutual. Um, and what that is going to entail is uh, Nick and Ruben from your organization or, or from your county are going to go down and have some meetings with individuals from the state, get that approved, and then all the contractors that are awarded the project would participate in that um, owner direct insurance program. Successful uh, component to keep a safe project here, and then obviously with an opportunity for uh, some of that savings to come back to you, the county. Um, other things that we're working on, last time I met with you, we talked about some early procurement. So what we've been working on with uh, the engineers is that this month we're going to identify some elements that are going to go out for, um, for bid or pricing uh, for material procurement. We're looking at uh, electrical generators. There's also some uh, electrical switch gear, uh, potentially some boilers, and we're also looking at the detention equipment. And what that detention equipment entails is uh, the frames and the hardware uh, for obviously the, uh, the doors in the jail. It's a big component that's tied to that. It's a long lead time item and it's one of those things that's been fluctuating in price. So we want to be able to lock that in. The reason that we're at this time in May is that we, have to, we had to coordinate floor plans. We had to coordinate some of the electrical items before we could get that ready to go out for procurement. So we're targeting to have that put out here by the end of the month and get some bids in in June. Um, so We've got some pretty pictures up here. Uh, I think we've got four of them here to, to show you. Um, the first one there was a site plan, if you want to go back to that, just to kind of show you uh, how the building's going to lay out uh, tied into the existing building. So I do want to talk to you a little bit about phasing. Uh, when we start the project, we're going to build the addition uh, on the south end of your campus, um, and we still need to have your jail continue to function while we're doing that. And there is a connection point uh, that is made uh, where in your existing loading dock is that we're not going to finish that uh, part during phase one. 
uh, because obviously there is a connection point there is some shoring that would need to be done uh, so there's going to be a portion of the project uh, that will have to be completed after we get done with the jail demolition so uh, the plan is to get the jail and the sheriff's office up and operational that parking area that is down on the lower level and up at grade will wait until the second phase after the building comes down so we'll move all of the inmates and the sheriff's staff over into the new building then we'll come in and we'll demo the old building um, and then we'll finish up that parking area and then the green space and, and parking space that's on the east side of the campus so that's kind of the phasing approach when you, when you get a feel for that uh, there has already been review by shippo um, which is the state uh, historical um, preservation side in regards to being able to build on. Uh, obviously, that's a, a goal. There are some elements that we need uh, to keep in mind in regards to how do we deal with the veneer on the east side of that building. So the demo of that and reutilizing some of that veneer will be um, associated with some of that work in phase two. So when you see the completed project, it's going to be done in phases. It would be nice if we could do it all in one time, but um, obviously we need to, to keep things operational as long as we can. Uh, next photo here. This is the, uh, the new front entrance and some of these things continue to be massaged. So uh, the landscaping that you see here is, is, isn't an accurate um, uh, rendering. We've made some changes just last week in regards to the submittal for uh, the PDD. So there's going to be some different components that you see in that front area there. Um, what we do with grades and, and elements. It's not perfectly flat like that, but you're getting an idea of what that new front entrance will look like. So. The goal is to direct uh, all of your uh, citizens that come to the building to the new front entrance and then steer them away from your existing front entrance. So um, that's what that glass area is there on the left hand side of the picture. You want the next one? Uh, next one, just another view there from um, the uh, southwest side of the campus to get you a view of what that looks like with the tier. They, they step that back up on that uh, upper floor to be able to give you uh, a tie into the existing building. And the last picture, and then this is the last picture of what that front entrance will look like. They're changing some of that, that plantings that are in there in the front. So, um, how about I just answer the question that you all have? Is how much is this going to cost? Is, is, that, is that what you're going to ask? Well, yeah, I, it's really too. Please. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming today. I did have two questions, and you answered one of those questions. But my second question is. Uh, what are you planning on doing and changing and talking about with this override that we have? How much is the procurement that you're planning on doing going to save us? Sure. And then what are your long-term plans to help this project come in under budget? Sure. Well, those are great questions. Um, how about I start with what's happening with the market? So you can kind of, kind of get a sense of what's happening in the construction market in general. Um, I think you all know um, prices of everything has continued to increase, right? And uh, there's scope in this project that um, is required based on the program, right? And the thing about your project is that a good portion of it, um, the, the vast majority of it, is uh, a housing uh, for jail. If we were to cut scope, we would be cutting beds, right? So the bed count would go from what is recommended and what is needed to something that wouldn't serve the purpose over the course of the next 30 to 50 years, right? So we as a team, and when I say a team, it's not just the design team, it's not just the county, it's collectively we've brainstormed as to where are areas that you can cut uh, and able to save those, those sorts of dollars, right? And the fact of the matter is that you can't do much cutting without compromising the program and how the building is, right? So we have dialed back um, some of the elements so there were some precast elements that were in there. We pulled them back to CMU because the markets on precast right now has really skyrocketed. CMU has been somewhat stable. Um, and uh, so we've, we've changed the design elements to be able to mitigate some of that cost, right? Um, the early procurement that I just referenced in regards to the um, detention equipment and then the electrical equipment would probably in, be in that 10 to $12 million range, okay? And uh, the percentages of what that savings would be from what they've been increasing, I can tell you that every month we've, we've been seeing significant increases that range anywhere from 5 to 20%, right? So, you know, if you look at 20% on $10 million, it's a big number. I'm not guaranteeing that that's what we're going to see. But the sooner that we can lock in these prices, the better you're going to be, okay? Um, the term under budget, 
um, of where you were at with $58 million, I don't think is feasible or where we are right now. That, that's just the nature of where you're, where the market is right now. Okay, and I want to get that fact out there for you. Um, what you're going to see, and I can give you based on what we've seen bidding, we bid a project uh, at the uh, end of last year, and it was 10% over what the budget should have been. Okay? We bid one about a month and a half ago, and it was 25% over the budget of where it should have been. Okay? We've been looking at the pricing of, of your elements, and, and to say um, a percentage of where you're at over right now, I think would be um, a disservice to you. So we've talked to contractors about where those are. Okay, and we're asking them, what does the pricing look like in July? And they candidly tell us, we don't know because our vendors won't give us numbers that they can hold for more than a week. And that, that's not the information you want to hear, right? But that's factually what's happening in the market, okay? So as you start to look at the, the process and how we move into the project in, in regards to how do, you, how do you save money, the only way that you would get this back to $58 million is if there was significant cuts to the program. I mean, ones that would be painful to the overall performance of this project for the life of the project, right? Um, so counties that I've been dealing with right now have looked at what does it look for additional borrowing, um, if there is additional borrowing that's there. Other counties have used that as ARPA funds to be able to bridge that gap. Yeah. Um, so those are elements that have been done by other counties because they've identified that there is a need. The need hasn't changed just because the market has went crazy, but how do you identify that, um, that cost and then how do you make sure uh, that you're spending those dollars wisely? So I know that's... That's not a direct answer to your question, but that's giving you a picture of, of what's happening in the construction market in general and, and how are they being handled by uh, some of your neighboring counties. So. Other questions? Yes, sir. Talking about CMUs, which I assume is currently Yep. Um, replace, is that replacing all of the gas and no. We, we still have precast um, on the exterior facade because we have to, because of the historical requirement to have that facade look somewhat similar with your existing courthouse, we do have some precast around around the exterior. But typically, we would, we would see more precast panels that would be wall panels. Mm -hmm. We do still, still have some at floor pan, floor panels because they provide us a fire rating. Where if we went with a, a bar joist and deck or even uh, steel, steel uh, beams and deck, we would have to fireproof them, so the cost of that offsets the precast. When I say the precast, typically we would have more um, structural walls that were there. This is just more of a, a veneer that we're putting on the, on the building. So at CMU, the reason the balance is, has always tipped in the, in the favor of precast is because CMU is labor intensive, right? You literally have an individual that's picking up the block and placing it in, and uh, labor's not cheap. Uh, but what's happening on the precast side is that that market has been flooded to the point that it has long lead times. Some of them are in excess of a year to 18 months, um, and the prices uh, really jumped up, 30 40% in price increases, just because of the backlog that's there. So it's managing some of those decisions that are there. Do we still get the precast uh, definitely local? Well, what happened was Spancreet was bought out by Wells, um, so Wells is Wells is a large organization. It still it still has the, the, the plants that are local. Is it owned locally? It's a matter of what you call local. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there, there's other vendors that we've utilized. We have about four vendors um, throughout the Midwest that we will get pricing on. So we want to make sure that we have competitive pricing and have multiple numbers. Uh, so we'll reach out to all of them when we uh, go get the bids. Please. So, I just want to make a comment to you. I supported this project because of the additional programming that was going to happen in this space. Because I feel so strongly about returning incarcerated individuals into a productive lifestyle after their incarceration. And this additional programming square footage is important to that. I mean, we have workforce issues across the country, across our state. And incarcerated individuals can contribute to alleviating some of those workforce, but we have to do the programming for rehabilitation to make them productive contributing members of society. 
So I appreciate the fact that the ad hoc committee has not looked at pulling back on that programming space because um, it's so important. And I think that our job as county board supervisors is going to be educating the community about why this is going to cost what it's going to cost, the importance of what we're trying to do with <coughs> incarcerated individuals in our community. And that that is going to take, I think, some effort because we can't go back to the people and ask for more money. I mean, at this point in time, hopefully we can spread paying over, you know, paying for this over a couple of years and with the additional bonding. But we, I just want to make the point that we as county board supervisors are going to have to work hard to educate the community on why this is necessary. I was in Jackson County last night. As you know, they're thinking about building a jail also. And these same conversations are happening in Jackson County. And so I, I just really want to challenge all of us to be advocates for this space and to look at the long-term potential of what we need in this state and helping people's addictions and alcohol problems and soft skills and all of that stuff. And, and I appreciate the fact that you all are not going to pull back on this because I feel strongly about the uh, programming space that we need. And uh, let us know what we can do as county board supervisors to help educate the community about the necessity of this space and come up with the best way that we can to finance it. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. You make a good comment. I just want to share with the group because um, this inflation isn't just impacting what County. We deal with a lot of projects throughout the state. And um, the message that you just shared with me is what I'm getting pretty consistently from boards across the, the, the state that I'm, that I'm working with because they know that it's not a decision that they made to grow the scope of the project, right? It, it's market that's driving it. So, what I'm hearing from individuals is that as long as we're identifying the need and we're not overspending just because we've increased a building, we need to meet the needs um, that we identified for earlier, whatever earlier was, right? And I think at Wood County, you guys have identified what that need is, uh, that you've, the need has been there for over a couple of decades, right? And um, you made the decision to move forward and then the inflation hit you. So. The challenge that you as supervisor should say is, is there any fat in that square footage? And I can tell you right now there is none. Um, what you have right now is the bed requirement that you have. You have the support square footage to be able to make sure that that jail functions the way that it is. And you got a itty bitty sheriff's office. That's what you got. Um, and uh, to say that there's elements that you can cut out of there, there isn't. Um, there, there's things that go into that design that make it, I'm going to call it utilitarian. You're building, you're building a, a, a facility for function and utility, right? That's what your facility looks like. I've been part of projects that have had frills um, and they've had some, uh, some elements of that. Your, your building isn't that. Your building is to get a job done, right? Uh, to, to help the community in regards to um, securing it. And like you say, to make sure that you're helping those individuals correct what's what's wrong in their life and get them back into society so that they can be productive. And at the end of the day, I think if you ask the taxpayers there, if that was accomplished, would they invest the dollars in doing it? And I think the majority of them would say yes. At least that's what I'm having from other counties. Other questions? <clears throat> See, you're not going to invite me back if I keep giving you bad information, right? <laughs> We do have a jail construction ad hoc meeting immediately following the county board meeting, so you're all welcome to attend. Uh, one of the things we will be discussing, discussing is the name that's going to go on the facility. So if you have any input or great ideas, please attend. And Madam Chair, if I may, that meeting has been moved to room 114 instead of 105. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, oh, Supervisor Clendenning. Thank you. Thank you. Um, they did a good job at this meeting, but uh, what's unfortunate is the fact that the, this, this is not going to be televised, and, and I think that should be changed. For we in the town of Grand Rapids, we have our meetings televised, and if, if the person's not going to be there, we have somebody else that will do it. And I think this was a very important meeting for you, and I, I think that River City's access, or whatever they're called, 
should notify us that they're not going to answer. Thank you. Please. If I may, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, actually, when we saw that River Cities was not um, going to be here, Lisa kicked in the record on the WebEx. So this meeting is recorded. Thank you very much. We have our next meeting already set for June 21st, same place, same time. And I will call this meeting adjourned at 10.07.